Hey there, I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at Unity's input system and how we can use it for VR input. A precursor to this video would be to make sure you've watched both the action-based input and it would help to watch the OpenXR video as well. That'll give you a little bit of base knowledge before jumping into this one. And what we're ultimately going to be doing is we're going to be creating two examples, one for toggling an object on and off as well as changing its color using an input value. And we're going to be doing that using our own custom actions. So we have a lot to get through, we have a lot of explanation, we're going to be looking at some documentation. So sit back, relax, get a drink, and let's get started. And also, I may be down here in the corner from time to time if I want to explain something and there's not a whole lot going on screen. I won't be down here all the time because that would just be kind of annoying. So let's, uh, let's, let's, let's close this. Alright, before the project, I'm going to be using Unity 2020.3.3. I think this is the current version of LTS. I also have the XR Toolkit set up and action-based input with OpenXR. So if you want to be following along, make sure you already have that set up on your end. Which is kind of why you need to watch those other videos. But the first thing that we're going to need to do, obviously, is create our custom actions. And so what we're going to be doing is going to the, not the XR folder, but the samples folder, and going to our default input actions that come with XR Toolkit. And once we open that up, you may be somewhat familiar with these two sets that get included with it. And we can add additional actions here, but to just keep our stuff separate, we're going to create a new action map here. You'll see I already have one just called custom that I used to put the tutorial together, but we're going to go ahead and create a new one that we're just going to call video or you call yours, whatever you want. You can call it custom. And so what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be creating some actions, actions that will then be hooking up to different inputs. Um, we'll set all that up and then we'll kind of go through the explanation. We're going to be looking at a little bit of the documentation, so it's kind of difficult to either jump back and forth between the two. So we're going to set everything up and then we'll kind of explain it. So ho hopefully that sounds good. So like I said, the first thing that we're going to do is create a toggle. Now when you're naming your actions, you don't want to name them like joystick or button or something like that. You want it to be more abstracted for the actual thing that the player is going to be performing. So in our case, it's going to be toggling an object, so we'll just call it toggle. And I actually don't remember what I called the other one, so let's look at our custom one. I just called it color. So we'll also create another action that we're just going to call color. There we go. So for our toggle, I'm going to be using an index controller, and I'm just going to press the primary button to turn a game object on and off. So let's click on our binding here. We'll go to this path, and we'll click on that. We'll go to XR controller. And you'll note that we both have these generic XR controllers as well as these specific controllers here. We have some of these that we're not using anymore, some of them that are deprecated, and we have some for OpenXR. You may notice that we don't have a Vive controller or an Index controller for OpenXR. If you don't see that, make sure that you can just hit play really quick within your editor and those should show up. I don't know if that's just when Steam VR gets enabled or what, but let's do that really quick. So I hit play on the Unity editor, and if we come back to our paths, you'll now see that we have this index and this Vive set up here. I'm not sure why that is, but just something to know for the time being. But like I said, I want to hit the primary button on it, which is just going to be the A button. So let's hit Vive index controller. And if we want to, we can specify if it's the left or the right hand controller by clicking up here. But for this demonstration, it can be either or. So I'm going to select the primary button here. And that's pretty much it. You may also want to add a generic primary button here as well if you want to account for other controllers, but for right now, this is just fine for me. But if you notice, up here in the action type, it just says button. And you want to remember that because we're going to be looking at the documentation for this, but also keep in mind that there's going to be these two other action types here called value and pass through. But now let's set up our color, where we're actually going to want to get a value from it. And for that, our button isn't going to be a particularly good use for that. So we're just going to hit value. And then we'll have access to all of these different control types. And these different control types kind of manage how the input is actually going to be converted to those sort of pressed and released values. For the button, we're just going to get a value of 0 or 1. For the axis, or the analog, we'll actually get values that are either of between 0 and 1, or if we need something like a vector 2 for when we push the joystick or the touchpad forward or left and right. But we'll talk about each of those a little bit more once we look at the documentation. So let's hit axis really quick. And now, whenever we get this action here for our color, it's going to be specifically giving us a value from an axis. 
or more it's going to be treated like an axis. So let's set this up really quick, where I'm just going to set this up to my trigger. So I'm going to go to my index controller. Um, we will now sort of see that we have these grayed out ones that we're not allowed to use since we've changed the kind of input that it's using. But we specifically, let's scroll down here, and what did I say? We were going to use the trigger. And so we want to use our trigger here. There's going to be trigger pressed as well. Um, this is, if you look at this little icon here, you'll see that it's a button versus here. It's sort of supposed to be an almost like an analog stick being pressed back and forth. We're going to want to use this trigger here. And then we technically have all of this set up. So let's hit save. And we can actually exit out of this now. And now let's look at the documentation for what an action is and what a control type and all that good stuff. All right, and here we are within the documentation for the input action type, where if we scroll down really quick, you'll see that it's going to be those three types that I pointed out previously, the value, the button, as well as the pass through, where a value is pretty much going to be that it's going to do a little bit of work on the back end to figure out what action it should actually what input it should actually be using. But it's primarily going to be giving you a value and figuring out when things are going to be pressed, when things are going to be released, and all those events with it. We're only going to be using the started event for my example, but there's going to be the started, the performed, and the canceled events. And you can see where they're referenced here. We have started, performed, and canceled. So what do each of these things do and how do they work within this like sort of context that we're talking about? For a simple button press, these may not make a ton of sense, but understand that they're abstractions or disambiguations, I think that's another word you could use for that, where started means it's pressed, performed means it's the value has essentially been changed, and when it's canceled, it's been stopped. Now, a normal button, that may seem a bit strange, but when you think about maybe a joystick, or if you're holding a button, once you've started holding a button, hey, you've started holding the button. If you're trying to wait for it to reach a particular time point of like how long you've been holding it, and you release it before that occurs, that means that it's been canceled. And then any time that that value may change, that's when it's been performed. While the button, you know, kind of behaves like you would expect. It, it's, a, it's a button. Where then this changes how that sort of start, performed, and cancel events kind of take place. And I'm not going to read this all out for you, but, you know, take the time to, on your own, read all of this just to see how it all works in relation to one another. Where unlike the performed event and value, for button, it's only going to happen once. Once, it, once the sort of button's been pressed, and it's not going to trigger again until the button is released. And then we have pass through, which is very similar to the value, but there isn't as much going on in the background to sort of figure out through all of your different inputs which one it's going to be using. It's probably expected that you would handle some of that with your own code. And that's sort of covered in this sort of section here. So essentially what an action is doing for us is it's going to go through all of those different inputs we may have, and then say, hey, what's the value for this? What's the value for that? Is this going to be triggered? Is this going to be started? Is How is all of that actually going to be implemented? But we haven't necessarily talked about where we're going to be getting that input from or how all of that input is actually going to be translated before it even gets to an input action. So let's look at that now. And that's going to be done by those control types that we saw when we changed our input type to a value. So here we are within this sort of controls namespace where this is going to give us some short descriptors for all the different types of controls that are that unity uses. And a way of thinking about what a control is, is that it interprets the data we're getting from our input. So if we're getting like from our trigger value, we want to know once it's been pressed or once it breaks a threshold, we kind of want to be treating it as a button. So if we look at the button control here, it says an axis that has a trigger point beyond which it is considered to be pressed which this is what we're going to be using for actually toggling our object. But then we, we can actually look at our axis control here, where this is just a floating point axis control, which this essentially means we're going to be getting a floating point value from this type of control. And what's interesting about all of this, so we actually click on this, we can actually see the class itself and that it inherits from that axis control. So we're still able to sort of get that value but the button control is going to be interpreting that value that we're getting in either a zero or one rather than the values between when it's pressed and when it's released. And hopefully that gives you an idea of kind of what's happening behind the scenes here. I would heavily advise taking some time to look at this on your own. I probably can't explain it as well as you can just looking over it, reading it and interpreting it on your own. But I think that's enough for the sort of homework.
let's get back into Unity and let's actually write some implementations. And I have a couple of scripts I've already written the signatures for, so just to kind of cut down on the video time. So let's open up the my color object and my toggle object example scripts. And here we are within the toggle object where we're going to be getting a reference to that toggle action that we created and we'll be turning the game object on and off. And the first thing that we need to do is set up the input namespace. So we'll do unity engine dot input system. And to access our reference, there's a couple of different ways we can do it. A more straightforward way is using an input action reference that I'm just going to call toggle reference. And this is just going to give us a public field in our inspector that we can drop our object into. If we wanted to, if you're familiar with the action based controller and if it has a little checkbox there where you can choose to either use a reference or kind of create one with there within the inspector, you would use an input action property where this is just a struct so we can kind of contain multiple data, but it's a little bit more complex. So let's not worry about that right now. And for this example, it makes a little bit more sense to use the events since we don't need to ask for a value constantly. We just need to know when it changes where we're going to be using the started event. So once it's been pressed, we could also do this with performed since it's a, of the button type, but we're going to use a toggle reference. We're going to access its action. And then we're going to have the three sort of events we talked about previously. And we can see those by pressing on this lightning bolt here and we have canceled which is essentially you've released, performed, that it's been, the value has essentially been changed, and started, which is it's been pressed. So we're going to hit started, we're going to do a plus equals, and then we're just going to write our little toggle function here. If you notice, this is this signature down here. I'm going to duplicate this by hitting control D, and I'm just going to move it down to on destroy, and put a minus instead of a plus, because you just want to unsubscribe your events when we're using them. And you may notice we're getting the red squiggly line here because when we want to be using our events, we want to make sure we're using functions that subscribe using the proper arguments. And that's going to be an input action, callback context, context. That, and that's what we're just going to call it. In some of the documentation, you may see it called CTX. For me personally, I like to just use the full word so there's no, no confusion. <laughs> but you'll see if we actually want to, let's look at the input action itself. So let's go to its definition. And you'll see that we have all of this information that we can use if we wanted to. We can have a reference to the input control. So if you remember, it was going to be that button control earlier, that if we want to get even more information from that, if we right click on it. This may not be the best example of it since we're using a button and this is the more generic version of it. But obviously there's a ton of information here, but we're not really going to be using any of that. But if we go back to it, you'll see that we also have this callback context. And this is the specific struct with a bunch of information that we can check for. So we can check with a Boolean if it's started, if it's performed. And we also have functions to actually read the value, which is what we're gonna be doing when we're uh, reading the value from the trigger. So let's close out of this. And now that we have our context, um, but all we're gonna be doing is toggling the, the value. So we'll say bool is active. And we'll use the exclamation point here to just flip whatever value we're getting from the active self. And then we'll say game object, set active, and then we'll set our is active here. So anytime our toggle reference has started, so it's pressed, we're gonna call this function and we're gonna to toggle the game object. Pretty simple. So now let's see how we can change the color of it by getting the value of an input. Like before, we're gonna need a reference to an action. So we're gonna say public, input oh we need to i already already forgot i gotta got to get our input system namespace see i forget things all the time so we have our input action reference and then we do our color reference and since we're just changing the color we just want to get the mesh render really quick so let's have a private variable for that And we'll just get it in awake. There we go. And then with an update, all we're going to be doing is getting our value from our reference. And most of the time, whether we're using a joystick or something like that, it's most likely going to be a float. So when in doubt, it's going to be a float. So we'll say float value 
we'll get our color reference, our action, read value, and if you're familiar with generics at all, or when you're saying, oh, we're getting a component, we need to give it a type, or at least that's what it's expecting. So we'll give it a type of float, and then I'm gonna just pass it to this update color function, and we'll call update color, and we'll pass in that value that we're getting from our action. And if you remember, because we set it up as an axis, we're actually gonna be able to get this value. If we set it up as a button, it's only gonna give us a value of zero or one. So let's go down into our mesh render dot material dot color, and we'll just create a new color and put that value in it all the way across. So it's either just gonna be, it's gonna start out as black, and as we press it, it's gonna turn in, it's gonna turn white. Okay, there we go. And that's actually it for all of that. So let's go back into Unity and let's see if I didn't completely screw this up. <laughs> so let's go to our toggle object. And you'll notice I already have this rotator script on it. That's not important. It just rotates the cube to make it look a little bit nicer. But let's drag in our color and our toggle. And you'll notice that we need to set up our references now. So this is how we're essentially gonna be referencing those actions that we created earlier. So we come in here, you'll notice that I have those custom ones I created, but we specifically made the video ones. So we're gonna want our toggle for this. There we go. And then we're gonna want our color for this one. No, we're not, I screwed those up. <laughs> Let's undo those. We want our color and then we want our toggle. There we go. And one thing that happens all the time when you're dealing with input action, if it's not working, Ensure that you have the input action manager within your scene and you set the action asset. This is automatically gonna enable those custom actions that we created as well. So let's save our scene and let's hit play. Okay, so I got it set up. It's kind of over here, so I'm gonna be awkwardly looking over there or like I'll move the headset, I think. Uh, there we go. I need to figure out a better way to do this. <laughs> but on my controller, if I press the primary button now, it's going to hide the cube. Look at that, it's like amazing, it's like magic. And then, if you watch the trigger, if we slowly pull it, you'll see that it turns white. There you go. Ta-da, it's amazing, right? So, so obviously this is a pretty high level look at all of this. We didn't go too much into individual controls and the additional information we can get from them, but hopefully this is enough to kind of get you started. If you want to see another video on that, feel free to leave a comment below to let me know or other concepts you would like to see. Um, also feel free to subscribe. It really helps me uh, continue making these videos, but that's it for me. I'll see you all in the next one.